So we're here at the ECI headquarters. Jonathan, uh, great to be here. Good to see you again. Um, so one of the big debates in the industry at the moment is about um, how the network operators are coming up to essentially what is going to be a capacity crunch in their networks. Can you talk a little bit about that and the dynamics around it? Yeah, Ray, thank you very much and uh, nice to be sitting here having a talk with you today. So uh, the capacity crunch is uh, based on a driver, just to use a sort of a hard physics term, something called the Shannon limit. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second, but just to sort of structure where I want to go today, uh, what I'd like to sort of set as a goal for our industry is moving towards something which we call an agile, elastic, packet optical transport network. Uh, something which is much more efficient than the kind of multi-layer networks we have today, both from an overall capacity and efficiency point of view, uh, and also in terms of its capability to support a much richer variety of complex services. Now you're talking my language. What I'd like to do today is talk a little bit more about the drivers for that network. It's running out of capacity. And the thing that's driving us there is the Shannon limit, which is saying that any communications channel based on the inherent noise in this channel has a fundamental capacity limit. So no matter what heroic efforts you take, you're not going to go any faster right now in optical networks. We've sort of a sweet spot today. We can now drive signals for about 200 gigabits per second uh, up to about 800 kilometers. If we want to go faster, we can do that, but we're not going to do it for 800 kilometers. The only way that we can effectively do it is to decrease the noise. How do we decrease the noise? We make the span shorter. And as a result of that, we need to start thinking of other ways rather than just decreasing the lengths of the spans or adding fibers, all of which incur tremendous expense. So it's all about finding an economical way of adjusting to the future needs. It's interesting that you talk about economics because one of the other aspects of this is how you start looking at your transport network from a services point of view. If we take a look at high bandwidth transport services today, it's essentially very, very rigid and defined. Now, this isn't giving a lot of choice to the consumers. Uh, that certainly isn't the way that other services work in our network. And what we need to start thinking about in terms of moving towards a more elastic transport network is how we can start similarly creating uh, tiered shared bandwidth services itself in the transport network. This enables you to make your network more flexible in terms of resource sharing and in terms of oversubscription. Okay, so does the business case need to come first to enable the, the network operators to think about what they need to do next? So we can start looking uh, at a richer, more complex variety of services to offer the customers. As an example, rather than say offering a two gigabit per second full period uh, service today fully backed up, we can go to the customer and say, we'll give you one gigabit per second uh, committed service and another one gigabit per second excess information rates. Some of that bandwidth will be coming back uh, fully protected. Some of it will be available through dynamic restoration capabilities. Well, you know what, I can give you this service within half an hour and here's how much you're going to pay if you take it for a day and here's how much you're going to pay if you take it for a month. Right. This, by the way, is the way services work on the cloud today. There is really no reason why we shouldn't start using the same kind of model and moving it towards transport services as well. Okay, except today's networks aren't really set up to deliver that kind of flexibility to the customer. So how can this be achieved? Uh, this is moving towards something which in fact we can start uh, putting together and assembling based on a very rich array of agile network technologies that are available. Uh, the, the first category is the control technologies. Uh, we're moving towards a lot of SDN technologies. You also hear something called LSO or lifecycle orchestration for much more flexibility among operators uh, for creating end-to-end -end services across multiple domains. Uh, much more interesting is a lot of new agile transport technologies. So at, at the optical layer, we're now seeing agile transceivers so that you can create different uh, speeds of transmissions based on the particular channel that you have. Along with those agile transceivers, you also now have capabilities based on integrated performance monitoring and ability to do real-time OSNR measurements. If something fails or doesn't, or uh, the channel degrades, you can then adjust for that at the same time. So really you're able to maximize capacity in a very fundamental way at the, uh, the optical transmission level. 
Going along with that, there are other technologies such as uh, flexible spectrum technologies, whereby rather than being locked in as we were in the past to say a 50 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz grid, you can now adjust your channel bandwidth very, very precisely winding together different uh, signals to create something called super channels. Okay. Uh, but on top of the optical level, we also have things called like, the OTN or optical transport network level. A and what's really exciting there is how those technologies are getting much more oriented right now towards supporting packet technologies. One of the things that's happening is we're getting a sort of a mismatch of rates between the kind of client services that are supported at the Ethernet level and then the kinds of transmission rates that are supported within the transport network. So how do you deal with that? Uh, one is we have OTN switching whereby you can start putting together many many lower speed uh, Ethernet rates into a single high speed optical channel to really use that uh, wavelength very efficiently. Uh, on top of that you have new capabilities things such as ODU Flex uh, which means that you can match any Ethernet signal uh, and, and you could only assign the amount of uh, optical capacity you want for that signal. I again, we're really finding a ways to start, start serving the, uh, the packet customers, which is going to constitute the majority of the traffic, uh, and, and at the same time make full use of our uh, uh, optical transport networks underlying optical facilities. Okay. So are the operators getting excited about these opportunities? Are they, are they seeing the potential? I, I think the stage where the operators are right now is they, they see the potential in terms of more their long haul networks, uh, where they're able to sort of get more bang for the buck in terms of uh, the optical transmission. Uh, I still think there's a fair bit of education that needs to take place uh, with the operators that they can see more potential from these technologies to create the kind of dynamic networks that we're talking about where they can start adjusting on the fly towards uh, d supporting different uh, levels of uh, complex services for their customers. Okay, so sounds like there's a, a lot of work to be done by the network planners, the network operations teams, but also the marketing guys as well. I, I think so, and we look forward to a conversation, uh, with, of course, with our service provider customers. Uh, there's lots of opportunity there. A lot of food for thought there around the business dynamics that are facing the operators in the future. Jonathan, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Ray.